Hi everyone, happy Friday. Hello. Today we have another of our deep dive episodes and this one is all about Emilio Pucci. So Nadine, do you wanna give a little like blurb about what we'll be talking about today? Yes, so Pucci was actually more eccentric than I knew before I, I did some of some of my research. Like, you know, Every one of the designers that we've been like. Really been, yes. He really had a life that, and we'll go into a little bit about it, but his life sounds like it could be the plot of an action movie or an espionage, espionage movie or something. Yeah. But he also uh, it was a, an amazing designer, which I already knew. And he's well known for his psychedelic kind of 60s prints, but his roots were actually not in the you know the high fashion they were actually in a line of sportswear which is interesting yeah yeah and so we'll go, we're going to go through some a little bit about the history some of the early clothing designs and some of some bolos and ed said who is that <laughs> so if you don't know who Pucci is ed you need to know and you're, you're going to find out today and it's something <laughs> that you definitely be looking for in the thrift stores because there's a lot of money to be made in Pucci and there's really no Pucci duds. I mean, there's some things that just don't do as well as others, but you know, you're not, some things you're not going to make hundreds on, but still, you know, Pucci is a, is a, is a brand that will always bring you some money. So. Absolutely. And I just realized we skipped our little introduction. If you are new to our channel, this is Nalo's Thrift Talk and I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And we talk about mostly fashion related, clothing related, but all sorts of thrifting and buying secondhand, selling on eBay, Poshmark and Depop, and basically buying used and selling used to create a sustainable lifestyle. So that's what we're all about. Yes. And we have a couple of our usual segments. So we will do those before we dive into our big Pucci episode. And as always, Nadine, what are you wearing today? So I am actually wearing a Pucci scarf. This is not too vintage. I think it's probably like, I'm not sure about that, but but as, as according, so the tag was the actual like label was cut off of it, but I know it's Pucci because it's signed Emilio. Mm -hmm. So, but somebody cut off it, but I can tell that it's, it is cotton and it's one of the newer cottons uh, that so, and it is also the edges are hand rolled and hand stitched. Um, so this is one of the newer ones, probably like mid two thousands, I'm guessing, but it is cotton and some of the older ones, the, the ones, the scarves that you, we'll talk about the scarves, the scarves that you really want to look for are the silk scarves. And this one, this one is cotton. This one, if I was to sell this one, I could probably get a good, you know, maybe, maybe 30 to $40 for it. So, but you know, it's, okay. and I'm keeping it. So. And I mean, how much did you pay for it? Probably. I paid, you know what? I don't even remember, but I think the scarves, I think I got it at my Goodwill, they didn't know what it was, and I think the scarves are like two ninety nine, so yeah, probably like two ninety nine, a dollar ninety nine or two ninety nine, one or the other. So yeah. Jason in the chat says, "Nice dress, Lola." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, because if you don't know, Jason's a big Tiki fan, and so it was actually because of his influence that I picked this up um, at the thrift store. I don't even remember which one it was now. I think you got that at the one in Camden. I, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. So there is this um, huge, kind of sketchy uh, thrift store. Yeah, it's changed its name now, but yeah. yeah. But it, yes, very sketchy area, you know, not, but great finds. Yeah. So, and Jersey Jane says, Bright, cheery florals. Yes, I do not have any Pucci to wear today like Nay does. So I thought I would, in the spirit of Pucci, pick the most patterned and bright thing in my wardrobe. And it is this Hawaiian vintage dress, which fits me like a glove, um, much like the one I wore, I think it was last week. It's one of the few dresses I found that just like put it on and That's it was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did notice this morning when I put it on that the zipper has come a little loose so I need to fix that but um, so what what is the brand on that remember you asked me this last time I wore it and I don't remember it's it's not like a high-end brand because I remember 
you sent a picture to Jason when we were thrifting and I was wearing yes, the dress. Right. Yes, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like anything astronomically special, but actually the um the detailing on the dress and how it's made is just incredible. It has all of these perfect like pleats that really just make it, you know, that much more flattering. And so it was it is very well made, although I don't think it's like a high end. Brand. Well, a lot of the vintage clothing that was not high end was yeah. better then. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, my earrings are also thrifted. These are vintage beaded oh. earrings. I kind of thought they matched my. So. And we are, we have our. And our next segment is our weekly thrifted home decor. Yes. And I have one, so you'll, you'll probably appreciate this, Lola. So this sits on my nightstand and I use it because at night I take my, I usually take my earrings off, my rings, you know, my jewelry off. And at night I put it on this little, on this little tray, oh, yeah. but this is Mexican. It's called Tonala. That's the, that's the look mm -hmm. of that hand painted look. Um, and it does say Mexico on the back. It's just clay pottery. And I probably paid like a dollar for it. I don't even remember, but this is like my little go-to ring tray on mine and my dresser. So, if I put a tray on my bedside table, Mookie would push it off every oh, single God. night. He pushes. I can't put anything on the table anymore. He just like it's his little hobby. He pushes it right off. Well, I'm surprised my kids haven't pushed it off. <laughs> I mean, I do have cats and a dog, but it's usually the kids that that do that kind of thing here. <laughs> Kids will do that. Yeah. Um, so my item is I have a big collection of these gold metal. I mean, they're not actual gold. They're like cheap metal, but intricately patterned vintage um, frames. Ornate would be the word. Ornate, right? yes. That's a great word for them. And we use these as part of our um, wedding decor. So instead of a photo, I put just some pattern paper in them and set them down like trays. And then we had a candles and flowers. Oh, nice. And now, so this one's a picture of my parents from my wedding. Uh -huh. A lot of them did not have the backings anymore. Or if they did, they were in really bad shape. So you can order these. It's just, I mean, I think they were like less than a dollar. The shipping costs more. So okay. I had to cut them down to size because they were not exactly the right size for some of the frames. Since they're vintage, they're just like a little bit different than what's common today, but they're just um, like a acid-free cardboard. So, you know, super easy to do with an X-Acto knife. And the one thing that I would recommend that you need to do for these is just find a piece of like foam core to add a little bit of um, more room so there's not a gap. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because I did notice that over time a couple of them were starting to warp. Um, so like this is, a, this is a larger one. And you can see here where it was hung up on the wall and then this started to warp because it was holding too much of the weight and it just isn't strong enough. Um, so that's the only other thing I would do. But you, if you find these at the thrift store, they're not necessarily worth a ton. But again, I'm definitely not the only one who would use these for a wedding. So they could be something if you have a big lot to sell as wedding decor. And then also they actually work great as, um, as picture frames and you can easily fix the back if that's a problem. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I love that idea. It's a nice little kind of, kind of creative sort of upcycling idea. Yeah. So it's a, a little bit of a DIY, but it's, you know, even if you're not a crafty person, you can definitely, Oh, yeah, you, know, take much of item, you can rehabilitate and, and bring back into use. Definitely. Okay. Now it's time for our main segment, all about Poochie. So Nadine, once again, I feel like you did the you were the the lead researcher on this project. And I feel really bad about it because I said this time I would do like we would do it half and half and Nadine just ran away with it again. So I think you should start off uh, walking us through some of the history and then we'll talk about some of the um, main items that Poochie designed and what the comps are. If you find one, 
what they you know would go for on eBay or you know some other other platforms that um, these items sell well on. And and we do have you know, yeah. quite, a few, quite a few examples and photos to show you, but mm -hmm. so. He was born, so Emilio Pucci was born in Naples, Italy in 1914. And he, unlike some of our, some unlike Ralph Lauren and uh, some, he was, well, like Lily, I guess you could say, he was born into a wealthy family, a very noble family. They had been well known with nobility since like the 12th or 13th century in Italy. So really, you know, wealthy family. So he loved sports. He loved skiing, tennis, fencing, and car racing. And he was actually, interestingly enough, and this is where I talk about how his life is kind of like a movie. So he was actually on the Italian team of the 1932 Winter Olympics in New York State, which is held in New York State. And he did not actually compete, but he was on the team and he and he was there for the Olympics. So he was that good at, at, at us, at, you know, skiing and especially skiing was his most loved sport. So he was very well educated and he had a doctorate in political science, a master's in social science. And he actually served as a torpedo bomber during World War II for the Italian Air Force. And he saved the, this is where it gets a little interesting, more like a kind of an espionage movie. So he actually saved the life of Mussolini's daughter, Edda. So I guess she was going up for up on trial and during World War II. And so she, he actually smuggled her out of Italy and helped her, helped her escape to Switzerland. And he was jailed for it and he was tortured. I'm, I'm assuming like some kind of waterboarding or something. I don't know. They didn't say what kind of torture, but they actually tortured him to try to get the intel from him on where Edo was. And he had been, you know, he had been known stuff about the Mussolini, you know, family. And so they were trying to get intel out of him. So they tortured him. So he actually escaped jail and he fled to Switzerland himself. So really crazy, crazy, crazy past, really fascinating life. He was also uh, later, later on, he was in, he was a, an Italian politician. He just, sir, he had, he just wore so many hats. It's crazy. And he was married and he had two kids and his son actually died. He died in 1992. His son died like six months after he did in a horrific crash. So, but yeah, it's just crazy. But, but he had a really crazy life. So amazing when you think about it like how he was you know kind of a spy and he smuggled Mussolini's daughter out and then he was jailed and he escaped from jail and in World War II as a bomber and like just crazy stuff so anyway so his early clothing designs I'm going to start with the I just wanted to leave a note because I do think it's important to recognize that he was not fighting for like the good guys in World War II he was pro-fascist and actually yeah. Yes. wrote his master's degree uh, thesis at Reed in, in the United States. And it was even titled like a defense of fascism. So he's a little complicated. And as much as his life is very adventurous, um, he did not have some political beliefs that I think we would espouse. Yeah, I guess we don't have the same warm, fuzzy feelings about him. <laughs> We have the, the warm, fuzzy feelings about his designs. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I did read a couple places that were arguing that, like, he, once he, you know, was educated in America and he really espoused a lot of American ideals and, um, and moved away from some of his, you know, fascist beliefs. And, and I do think his politics were quite different once he was a politician. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't want to just like, completely erase that element of yeah because even like Mussolini himself was kind of a, a <laughs> leader you know he was not the nicest guy and so and he was actually you know he was friends with the family and he helped the daughter and you know so he yeah it was very it was very interesting though that you know to to say the least but yeah, absolutely so going to his jumping to his clothing designs his fashion history so his first clothing that he designed was for the Reed College skiing team. So his first, very first designs were for women's ski wear, interestingly enough. And so not high fashion like you think of him, ski wear, that was his. So his for, he, he designed a line of ski wear for women's, this is, and this is a really bizarre ad for the time. So it was actually, I think his name was 
Uh, L Lola, can you take it for a second? I have to yeah. do something. I have to step away for one second. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was, you know, obviously he was a very avid skier. And when he was at Reed, he basically paid his way for his tuition by uh, coaching the, the team, but then used the opportunity to also design their, their uniforms. And he um, was able to revolutionize some of the ski wear. So he was the first person to design a one piece ski suit, which you see echoes of that in a lot of his later designs, which we'll get to. And he uh, was, you know, very quickly was noticed for his unique designs and that they were both very functional and attractive. And so he got a lot of orders or request for orders for his designs. But at that point, he decided that this was actually a opportunity to create a business. So he left the Air Force and then started his own fashion house in yep. Isle of Capri. Yes. So thank you. My son stepped in and needed me. So yeah, so it says, the, the, the sideline there says, I can't, it says, please. Pucci's printed stretch suit sets off the figure of Rusty Guessman of Boston. Bare-chested companion is Count Silvio Alfieri. So funny. But I yeah, I'm right. going skiing without a shirt on. I just feel I like that would be very so unrealistic, yes, but <laughs> Oh, um, so yeah, so he also, so I don't know if you mentioned that, that he had uh, designed a woman's, ski. It, it started for a story in the European winter fashion, for European, on a story on European winter fashion, sorry, which was published in a 1948 mag, uh, Harper's Bar, Bazaar uh, magazine. No, so, I, did not, I did not mention that. So he was the first, yeah, so he was the first person to design the one piece ski suit and he had that, that stretchy material was kind of revolutionary for the time. And so, yeah, so then he received offers from the U.S. manufacturers to produce. Oh, I did, I did talk. Yeah. So I think it was, uh, uh, White Stag was the first, uh, was the first, one of the first companies that he designed for. So he designed a line of, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for the American sportswear company White Stag in 1948, and then he produced a swimwear line in 1949 with the stretch pod, pod fabrics. But and we have an example of what that looks like too. And soon he moved on to other items like brightly patterned silk scarves. And then he designed blouses for Stanley Marcus of Neiman Marcus in the 50s. So you'll see a lot of you'll see some ne uh, Neiman Marcus items and a lot of those are from the 50s because that was when he was ap actively designing for Stanley Marcus and he opened a boutique in Rome in the 50s and he really had gained international recognition for his design at that point and then in 1960 he formed a relationship with Form Fit Rogers he signed a contract with them and he designed lingerie and at home wear from made from a fabric called nylon tricot and that really ranged his 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 collaboration his form fit or form fit rogers line really ranged from the very late 50s to the 60s and and into the 70s so mm -hmm. really pretty vintage pieces and i think you have an ad we have an ad from we have yes so um i think it's interesting to note that when we think of Pucci, if you're familiar with Pucci, of course, the first thing you think of is his incredible psychedelic designs, which is something he definitely pioneered, but he also pioneered the fabrics that he used in his his pieces, which he also were, was able to patent. So, uh, so for example, like the nylon tricot is, um, tricot just means like knit in French. So it was a stretch, stretchy knit fabric that was you know pioneering for the time and i actually found one website that mass produces leggings that was basically crediting him as the precursor to the legging when he first made his like one piece yeah which is yeah. like i definitely never thought before like oh well, the, the legging has a fashion history but of course everything has some sort of history to it so that's sort of where our you know leggings and our modern yoga pants come from yeah and 
Uh, this was the, called the peacock, the peacock dress, and it became iconic. I've actually uh, later on in the presentation, I do have a, a sold sample to show of that dress. But that dress, that pattern became really, you know, famous because of Marilyn Monroe wearing it. Mm -hmm. And she was a big, she loved Poochies. She wore a lot of Poochies. And she requested to be buried in one of his dresses. Okay, I did not know yeah. that. So great yeah. trivia fact there, yeah. Okay, let's see, sorry. Um, and this is a famous photograph that pops up a lot on. Yeah, that's him in his studio, yeah, mm -hmm. so is actually Poochie himself and there's Jackie O wearing one of his silk silk, silk scarves tongue tied. I feel like I can't pull off that over the the hen scarf look. And there's another Marilyn Monroe photo she's wearing one of his silk blouses in that photo. And he also so jumping ahead a little bit he designed, so he ended up designing six complete collections for Braniff International Airways. And he designed hostess, pilot, and ground crew outfits between, this was between 65 and 74. And it was really. Paddington. Hi, Paddington. So every time. So his designs were really crazy for, I mean, they were not your traditional stewardess and, you know, airline employee kind of uniforms. The psychedelic tights, he had these hats that were called bubble hats that were kind of like a rain bonnet, but they look like some kind of, you know, alien spacecraft kind of, you know, like, like new wave helmet. It was crazy. So but there's an example of, of, of some of the stewardess outfits there. Yeah, I thought it was super interesting that uh, he designed them in layers in order to be able to like adjust to the weather and the demands of whatever the uh, workers were doing. So his, I think underlying all of his designs that they're incredibly visually stunning, but also in, Incredibly in tune to what the needs are for, you know, from skiing to stewardessing to, you know, whatever. Yeah. And just a couple other little points here. So he designed fabrics for the swimwear house Rosemary Reed in the late 50s, early 60s. So you'll see Rosemary Reed on the label of some of the, that swimwear. So you know that it is, you know, late 50s, early 60s, if you see that label. And then his designs, um, he designed in 1968, began designing menswear for Armenegildo Zanga. So that those are some, and then he also, I'm just trying to see if there's anything I missed here. Um, no, Sophia Loren, Jackie Kennedy, Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, they really, they really made him famous, you know, so. And so let's see. Okay, so the Barbie line, I'll talk about that. So <clears throat> a mark of his impact was that he actually, in 1968, he had versions of, Barbie had versions of the Braniff Air, International Airways first four uniforms. So it actually actually made a line of Barbie clothes. And you can see there, there's the bubble, the bubble hat that I talked about. It looks like a crazy, yeah, so there's, that's an example of what that looks like. So these are also, the Barbie Braniff collection is also collectible. And, you know, collectors look for that. So if you ever do find, you know, you're at a garage sale or a guard sale and you see Barbie clothing, you can maybe find that and it would be, it will, it will actually resell well. So, because collectors look for that. So I did almost say Marilyn Manson, yes. <laughs> I'm a, I, I, I was actually up late, like finishing this up last night, and I, I did not sleep well last night. So I'm a little, and I have not had my full cup of coffee, so I'm a little, little brain fog today. But so there's an example of these are some of the airline stewardesses for Braniff. That's a, that was an ad that was in that was a in the '60s. So. I just want to say hi to everyone in the chat. I think it's a little more chatty than usual even. So it's great to see you guys. And if you're watching this later, also thank you for watching. And I hope you all learn a ton. And so Claire just says that she found a 
uh, Poochie Scar Thrifting in Vegas still unlisted. We have lots of scarf comps for you. Yeah. So hopefully that will help you list it. And Carolyn in the thrifting board, I'm not sure if she's watching or not. I did tag her because she was interested. But if she's not watching now, I'm sure she'll watch after the fact. She had posted some pictures in the thrifting board. She just posted them of a vintage handbag that she has, a Pucci handbag. Mm -hmm. And I can give her some information on that. But we'll also be talking about handbag comps. And Lizbeth, I don't know if Lizbeth is watching, but uh, she also was interested. She had an example of some lingerie. So people are, are asking us for some examples of you know of, of things that they have and they're and they're interested in knowing what you know an idea of what what to how to list them and what they're going to sell for so yeah so and also proof that if you're thrifting you can find Gucci. it is out in the wild i have only found it once but <laughs> nay you've had some more luck than yeah, i have so i've had it well you've you've yeah well i i sent you one but i also yeah. had a i have one listed which i had in hand and somehow being absent-minded as I am, I put it down somewhere. I can't find it at the moment. So I'll show you that listing. But Lola also had a had a pretty pretty significant Poochie find recently. I, I have it on hand, so I will show yep. you. Okay. And so, yeah. So, so these are more of the uh, uniforms he designed, right? Yeah. So he designed, so, so the vintage uniforms and accessories, like the scarves, are a big bolo. And we do have some examples. Yeah. So um, here's a comp for one of the um, flight. I like how they say flight attendant, which is of course the flight attendant. They modern they term for the airline stewardesses. Yes, but mm -hmm. yeah. this is currently listed, right? This is not a sold, but. I think that this is a, yeah, it's hard to find. And some of these are so rare that it is hard to find. So, but you can get an idea of like these mm -hmm. prices. I didn't post anything that was active that was not priced accurately. Yeah, I mean, that definitely seems in Well, yeah, like I didn't price anything that was priced like, you know, way too high or way too I So this was a sold for 350. Um yeah, we, can you pull that up on the screen on the on the Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought I had I it. I know you didn't realize that they were pulling them up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so this is yeah, this one sold for 350. And then if you can show the first one again. Yeah. So this is the one I was looking at and thought was on the screen. Sorry yeah. about that. So this is at this is uh oh, is this is eBay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the current listing for four yeah, yeah, for four hundred dollars. So yeah, and that's pretty much on par with you know the yeah. price, yeah, the asking price. So and then this one sold for three fifty with one bid. So I don't know why. You know, I think they could have had better photos, probably better keywords. They have commas in there. So I bet they could have gotten more than that if they had had a better listing there. Yeah. Well, it looks like this person, they only have three three feedbacks. So they may just not be a big time seller. Probably just selling a one off. Yeah. 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 So, you know, probably I would have listed this maybe 450 best offer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, you know, not an auction. See what yeah, happens. not necessarily an auction, but. But yeah. hey, not bad. Uh, he, uh, so he also designed, this is very interesting. He designed the three winged logo for the Apollo 15 mission patch for NASA, which is really kind of interesting. Now he had different colors there, but they changed it to USA colors. So they changed it to red, white, and blue. I don't know what his original colors were, but you know, they were probably some wild, crazy colors, but obviously I would love to see that blue made more sense. So yeah, but he did actually design that, which was, which was another interesting thing because that's kind of totally, you know, out of, seems like it's totally something that is out of his league, like the ski, like the ski wearer, but you know, he, he was, you know, interesting designer. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Oh yeah. So <laughs> this is kind of interesting too. He designed actually a skin, a, a PlayStation skin. So uh, that, that, well, I don't, yes. Yeah, so this well, was this an older, yes, actually, yeah, this was his company that designed it. I shouldn't say him because he was long gone when this was, done but yeah so there, it just shows you there's a whole bunch of items with poochie designs or cell phone cases there's and we'll get into some of the collaborations later mm -hmm. so, yeah so he's yeah so he died he oh so his prints are all signed P emilio not poochie everything's signed emilio and um he actually he so he died in 1992 mm -hmm. and he his daughter allowed I'm going to butcher her name, Ladomia, 
Pucci took in charge, took charge of the company at that point. And so the French LVMH luxury goods empire acquired 67% of Pucci in 2000. And then Laudomia became the image director. So from 2002 to 2005, the collections were designed by the designer Christian Lacroix. If you mm -hmm. haven't heard of him, he's a big high-end designer. And then starting with the fall 2006, it was Matthew Williamson. And then he was replaced by Peter Dundas in October of 2008. So you can also use those designers as keywords too with the more recent pieces. And Laudomia Pucci has created, she created a talent center in the family estate in Granolio in Italy. And every year she does invite students to see the Pucci archives and inspired by those to come up with new ideas. So lots of, you know, lots of different designers there now you know and, and ideas but i think i think ladomia i think she still does have a lot of influence on the brand to this day even though she doesn't have 100 of it so this is the current item on their website correct this is so yeah this is modern pucci that's you know for sale retail um you can see the retail price there is <laughs> quite high good more please uh jason says can you is it, jason is this good i try to zoom in a little bit more uh we yeah we should probably try to get, um, figure out how to get bigger screenshots. Cause I think that's. Okay. So this is, was $13,535. It's current on their website right now. So that gives you an idea of exactly of what you're talking about. You know, so if you go to the Poochie Red website, which I highly recommend because you can get an idea of collections of the vibe of what things are going for. I always say that to go to the brand's website to do some research. So these are some jewelry items that are, you know, a cuff bracelet there are $539, $39, you know, the, the and there's so many clothes, there's so many clothing pieces that are in the thousands on the website, mm -hmm. accessories, there's a collaboration, a Rosenthal collaboration that has, you know, vases and and different home decor items so there and then there's the um the collaboration there's what is it the i'm sorry i'm having a brain moment now um it doesn't matter we'll get to that oh, yeah we have we have a bunch of info on we'll get to that so anyway so <clears throat> So the, so basically, yeah. So the the, the accessories are now sold through Amelia Pucci, Pucci and the Ro, Rosingall Boutiques worldwide. That's the other name that they're under, and, and high end department stores designed by Lena Pessoa. So I butchered that name too, I'm sure. And then the clothes and accessories are, yeah, um, they're you know everything is still most of the prints still are very fanciful psychedelic i would i would use the adjective kaleidoscope that's a, that's a good a good um adjective for his designs and <clears throat> so the 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 this fashion how the lena uh lena Pesoia, whatever it is uh, produces the ready to wear clothing and accessories for women in addition to a small range of men's accessories there are some Pucci men's items as well and um, so, and Saks Fifth Avenue is another one that, that uh, there was, there's been a lot of collaborations with Saks too. Mm -hmm. the, oh, that reminds me. I wanted to share. Oops. Okay. So yeah. So Lena Pasoya is a Brazilian designer mm -hmm. and uh, so, and she designs all of the actual boutiques. So she's, you know, so the look of all the boutiques are designed by her and there are boutiques in Vegas, New York. Val Harbor, Palm Beach, Beverly Hills, Boston, East Hampton, uh, Miami, and there's a new one coming to Dallas. And then the new one just opened uh, on, on Monroe Avenue in New York City. I think there's three stores in New York City, actually. So, ah, that's gorgeous. So this is a dress that is in the um, the Mets Fashion Collection, um, the Fashion Institute Collection. And one thing I thought was really cool on this, so obviously because it's a museum, it's the Met, they have the date of this of this uh, design, ah. as well as you know some fairly intricate information on on who Pucci was and also this item. But then I had never seen this before. They actually have a photo of the in interior tag. So if you were trying to date a vintage piece. We do have, you know, there's the um, 
Vintage Fashion Guild, which we talk about a lot, and they do have some information on Poochie, but this could be another resource for Poochie or for any other vintage. Yeah, brand. that's great. Yeah. In the fashion collection, you might be able to find the tag. And so here, this one says also Saks Fifth Avenue. So this was sold at Saks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you have the exact date of this item because it's, you know. Yeah, that's, that's great. That. Yeah. That's awesome. That was a really cool detail. And of course, also, it's just an incredibly beautiful piece. And there's, you know, great, uh, great photographs of it with lots of information. So that is awesome. And we have other items um, by Pucci in the collection. So this I is. I see they are considered art history, too, which is. Oh, really absolutely. Cool. Yeah. There's some actual prints by Pucci, too. There's some, you know, like the art itself. There's, there's, mm -hmm. um, I forget where, but they're exhibited in different places. There's one that is an architectural, an art considered an architectural piece. So yeah, there's all kinds of different, it's very interesting. So that is a great website, a great resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and also those evening gowns and the maxi dresses are extremely, extremely desirable and can sell in oh. the thousands as we will show. So, so, believe the rest of our uh, example her comps and bolos. That's Stacy Ferrisi. So she says that she's glad that, yeah, that many pieces out there are vintage designer and have place in museums. Exactly. They are works of art. That's very, and she also said that my dog is Paddington. That Christian Lacroix for Pucci was super popular. Probably one of the best. Yeah. Most an ab fab. I don't see, I don't know ab fab, but one or the yeah, but I'm assuming that's a recent. So, yeah, so oh, Christian Lacroix is definitely a high end designer, and that, yeah, some of those mm -hmm. are beautiful. Sorry about my dog here. If it's not the kids, it's a dog, and today it's the dog. <sighs> He's cute though, so. He's cute, but he just, yeah, he does not like me doing the show for some reason. He just wants your attention. <sighs> Well, I have one hand petting him, so hopefully that will keep okay. him. Okay. So anyway, we have lots of comps mm -hmm. and examples of bolos. So, of course, anything by Pucci is a bolo. I don't think there would be anything yeah. that would be a dud, even if something's not in great condition. I know that there's some people who are recreating his older vintage patterns and would be looking for fabric or could be reusing fabric. So even that, I think, you know. Yeah, and we'll talk about fabric yeah. too. So lots of okay. Okay, so swimwear. Declan, can you pat him? Yes, swimmer. Sorry. We are moving into swimwear season, of course, but I'm sure that you know these are high-end items, so they probably would you know sell regardless of season by you know interest to collectors and and people who were shopping for specific pieces not necessarily to wear so this is on is this etsy yes i'm sorry yes that's correct so this is of course not a, a sold comp but that definitely seems yeah. uh, on par with the part yeah the vintage mm -hmm. some of the vintage swimwear can really really uh, go for a lot. And yeah, so that is one of the examples of the vintage. And you can see like the designs were kind of ahead of the times too, or not only the prints, but the actual, you know, the actual swimsuit, swimsuit designs, they were less conservative, you know, they, so. And so this is an example of, we're talking about the lingerie collab mm -hmm. or partnership with Form Fit Rogers. So here's an okay. advertisement with some great examples mm -hmm what the designs looked like. So that was 1972, this ad. And yeah, there's some of the, and very interesting. And it, it's funny that the text there kind of made me laugh. It's how does he do it? How does he know what women before they, what women want before they know the something yeah. like that? Okay. How does he know what women want before they know themselves? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So that funny. is funny. Yeah. I, I love the old advertisements because you can see that people had longer attention spans and there's just a lot more text. That is very true. Today. Yeah. No one's going to pause and read that in a magazine nowadays. Yeah. So, and this is the original tag on one of the swimsuits. Yeah. 
That's that's actually one of the uh, lingerie pieces. Oh, sorry. That's the lingerie tag. Yeah. So, really, even the tag had. And there's another ad. This one is, I think, 1968, and that was 1968 or 1969. I forget, but this is another ad that ran in a magazine. And that piece, I actually found some uh, some of you know that design. So. Of the print design? Yeah. So I know that Lisbeth and, and the thrifting board was asking me, I don't think she's watching right now, but she was asking me about a, a solid black piece. It was mm -hmm. she said she thinks it had lace on it. So some of the solid lingerie pieces can still go for a decent amount. I'm talking like 50 bucks or so, depending on the condition, depending on, you know, what, what it is. But the prints are do sell, do seem to sell better. And I do see a lot of people undervaluing what they have, which is kind of sad. It seems like the vintage lingerie does not sell as well on Poshmark, that it sells best on Etsy and it sells from good to people underprice their stuff and sell it for too less on for too little on eBay. So mm -hmm. I would say really Etsy is the best for the vintage lingerie. Um, I seem to they seem to get the the best the and the the long like the the um the long gowns and the the prints always they seem to sell the best so so this is actually this is search results on etsy yeah so this is yeah so it's so weird i had cropped all of these but i guess when you crop them in the they don't stay cropped when you copy them i guess i'll have to remember that i'll just start copying them in photoshop next time but anyway so so yeah. the, the prices here um if you can't read them they do vary a bit, so they're about you know seventy five to one fifty. Uh, this one in the corner is two seventy five. That definitely makes sense. It's more of the the dressing full dressing gown. Uh, I'm surprised this one isn't listed for more. The ivory lace, but I guess because it isn't a print, is listed for fifty. Yeah, the prints seem. I mean, the plain ones seem to go for around fifty ish, mm -hmm. give or take, depending on what it is. But it seems like the more plain ones don't sell for as much, but they still still a decent profit. I mean, I'll take fifty any day. You know, mm -hmm. so if you're in the lingerie section, you can get lingerie at, at the store for a few dollars. You know, so. right, right. If I were listing something like this, the set with the the nightgown and then the robe. Even for the solid ones, those items I know right now people are looking for because they want kind of fancy lingerie to lounge around at home while we're we're all in quarantine. So good point. I'm I'm actually surprised. I might go look for this myself <laughs> if it's still there. Uh, but I think you know these are items that right now during you know this period where we're all at home, you can definitely up the prices on yeah. some of these vintage lingerie pieces for sure but it does make sense that, that would be less because it's it's not a print oh this is a great great tip yeah it has the, the poochie logos in them which makes them more desired yeah so stacy for ac she is an very we talked about her with on our mask episode we were talking about the mask she's making the mask she is a valuable fashion resource as well she's in the thrifting board so you can always tag her and she knows she can basically like i ask her advice all the time for like authenticating high end items and whatnot she knows her she knows her her vintage fashion she knows her high end stuff so yeah mm -hmm. so these are sold on ebay and so the one, the top one looks almost look like looks like a play suit, although it says it's a nightgown, slip dress nightgown. That was a best offer accepted on a hundred dollars. Like looks a romper like. kind of thing. Yeah, 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 that's super cute. Yeah. Same with the the long uh, long button down nightgown, best offers on a hundred, and then the bottom piece is a robe. Yeah. Best offer accepted on 197. So that definitely makes sense that the robes are the robes and the long. And I think that some of these they might have if they see I and Jason was just saying this on his on his uh, most recent webinar. So if you ask it, you'll get it. If you don't ask it, you're not going to get it. So I think some of these some of some people I do think undersell what they have. They undervalue it. And yeah, so. And as you were saying, too, it seems like the prices are a bit higher on Etsy. So maybe it's also. Yeah, this no, yeah, I definitely see that, especially with the lingerie and the vintage swimsuit. Mm -hmm. 
that Etsy is the, the highest sold seem to come from Etsy. So, oh, that's in love from Stacy. She's so sweet. So the shoes are another bolo. Now the shoes, some of the shoes don't sell as well. I actually have somewhere in my profit pile. I have a pair of Pucci shoes. I wish I could have found them. I think they might be in storage in Philadelphia still. So no chance of me getting them right now. But anyway, the shoes, a lot of the shoes have those crazy prints too, but they're the, what sells things to sell the most interestingly enough is the sneakers. And mm -hmm. there was a sneaker line. I think it was, it was for different, it was called sneakers of the world and they had different colors for different, um, for different countries. And it was, so the, on the top is, um a pair of of the more the recent designs of sneakers and they, those went for 197.50 as you can see and those were pre-owned and that and then also you know the shoes so that some of the heels and the shoes sell about not in the hundred dollar range or a little less the shoes the heels don't seem to retain as much value however there are some really crazy psychedelic like platform shoes and whatnot mm. that have like you know, the, the crazy poochie, and those can sell for a lot. I didn't come across, I didn't come across any of those in my research, just off the top of my head. I know that, but definitely it's interesting that this, and there, there's also some collabs that we'll talk about with Adidas and Nike and some of those sneakers can sell well too. So. Yeah. And they're definitely very intense sneaker collectors. So that doesn't surprise me too much. I could see that appealing to two, you know, two sets of collectors, people who collect Gucci and then also sneaker so more sneakers yeah so these are more examples of some of the more recent ones and you can see again you know 325 299 you know 299 so yeah definitely there's definitely the sneakers definitely sell better so this is a this is definitely a bolo so this is a vintage 60s pair of sunglasses now these oversized 60s sunglasses have a following and there are a couple different colors the blue seems to be the most popular but if you find the a pair of these vintage round sunglasses all day every day they will sell for you know 500 dollars or more so they're gorgeous. I want a pair for myself. I do too. I thought that they're <laughs> awesome. So, and there's an example of an ad from the sixties of, of those sunglasses on the right. Yeah. So amazing. And now we're going to talk a little bit about purses. So one of the members of the thrifting board does have a purse that she was asking about. So it's one of the velvet bags. And so the velvet bags are are some of the, the more famous bags. Uh, some of them came in fabric, some of them are like satin. And now, and now today they're still made and a lot of them are like kind of a sateen fabric. Now I found actually, this is a good tip. I found a clutch, an, a poochie clutch in with the cosmetic bags like that bin in Goodwill. It was just sitting in there and I, as soon as I saw the print, I knew what it was and I sold it. It was just a small clutch had some flaws as well. And I sold that for about $150, I, I think. It was a couple years ago. So I don't have the comps on that, but I just, that was one of my best sales, you know. Yeah, and that's, that's so definitely, good. yeah. And then, so this one went for 365 or 385. Uh, this was from the 60s. This is an example of one of the velvet bags. And mm -hmm. yeah, a great, a great example because this is, I think, one of the few things that we have here that I would not necessarily see it and immediately think, oh, that's Pucci. So this is a really great image, just kind of like store in my head. Yeah, that's true. That. yeah, because it is beautiful. And once you say it's Pucci, it makes sense. But if I were just kind of skimming through stuff, I don't know if that would jump out at me. I but. want that bag. Do you, do you not see how like me that is? That, oh, that yeah. is no, I love it because I love kind of colorful stuff. And uh, that's I would I would die for that bag. Yeah. And Stacy says, I would have trouble selling those sunglasses. Um, yes. Yeah, if I found those sunglasses, I think I'd be keeping them. Cool. I would at least do like a photo shoot wearing them and then sell them or something. Yeah. I just, just. So funny, yeah. 
Yeah, I had a gorgeous pair of Gucci sunglasses, not Pucci, but Gucci. And I did part with them and I still think about those. You know, it's like when you find a good pair of sunglasses, sometimes it's, yeah. yeah. The, the box purses are another, uh, the, the vintage 60s and 70s box purses are also very popular and can sell for a lot. So this one is sold on Poshmark actually for $450. And you can see really pretty though, really, mm -hmm. really gorgeous. And here is another example. This, is this one is, this is one of the, so this one kind of looks like the one that um, the person, uh, I can't think of it, her name is Carolyn posted in the thrifting board. So <clears throat> I think she has something there. I, I'll have to look, look into it a little more because she didn't send me a label or anything like that. But um, I think she has something that that's worth, you know, quite a bit there. So this is, yeah, this one is, uh, this sold for three sixty nine again on Poshmark, interestingly. So, and some of the pooch poochy items do sell very well on Poshmark. I think the newer items sell better, but mm -hmm. there are sellers that do great with vintage on Poshmark as well. So yeah, nice. what I've noticed is the vintage sellers on Poshmark really focus on vintage yeah, yeah. and, and establish a following instead of just like, I've definitely not had great luck selling my vintage on Poshmark. I mean, it, it sells, but not for like top dollar. Like I see some of these vintage sellers doing. And I think it's because they're very focused. They have, you know, an Instagram following and they have a real, you know, clientele that comes back and knows what they have. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Which I would love to do, but I, yep. <laughs> I need to work on and I want to start selling vintage on Etsy. That's my yeah. Idea. I want to invest more in. Those who have some gorgeous vintage pieces. So the scarves, like the, like what I'm wearing today. So the scarves are very. They can be very high. You know, selling. They're not. A lot of the scarves are not going to go in the hundreds or thousands or anything like that. There are some scarves. Even the scarves on the website, the newer cotton ones are only about 120 dollars. Um, I mean, in comparison, <laughs> because yeah, that's, you know, in, in Pucci terms, that's pretty yeah. inexpensive, yeah. but <clears throat> the silk scarves, um, can go for a lot more. And some of the Braniff airline scarves mm -hmm. will go for a lot more. There's some collabs that, you know, that will go for more, but for in the, for, you know, you can make a decent, you know, 50 to uh, 200 or so on the scarves, you know, well, I would say 30 to, to 200 or so, depending and on that's the including like the one you're wearing. Yeah. 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 So I would say I would probably get maybe 40 for this if I was just, but I'm not selling it. So yeah. So you'll see there it's signed Emilio and there is there. Now that one is a silk scarf on the left. That is a current one that is on the website right now. I believe it's a few hundred dollars and that has an actual printed tag on it. Some of them actually have a, a, a like a, um, you know, like a cloth, a fabric tag mm -hmm. on them. Like this one did somebody, Flipped it, but and then uh, in the middle there, that's a vintage one that that's a, one of the vintage silk scarves, kind of like Jackie O wore, and that one for eighty eight. And then on the right is one of the Neiman Marcus. I I had mentioned that he did collabs with Stanley Marcus of Neiman Marcus, and this is one of the ones that he did. So you know right away that that was late fifties or early sixties because that was the era that was when he collabed with. Stanley Marcus. So this one, and that one is, is really awesome. That's a, I love that mod cloth print. And that is, that went for $175. So. so Tracy has a question. Does the scarf have his name in the print itself or do we need to look for the tag? It should be in the print, correct? It's in the print somewhere. Yeah. It, there's, yeah. It's signed. That's how you know it's, and it's not, again, it's not signed Pucci. It's just signed Emilio. And that you can see on the left there that his signature is very distinct. Great. Can you see my pointer? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. And okay, so this is this is kind of cool. So this was a skirt. I think this is actually, I don't think this is a sold. I think this is a current listing that was on Etsy, I believe. And that is just an awesome print on the left. And she has that up for 450. The sellers it up for, and I would imagine that it'll go for that or a little bit, you know, a little bit less, but that's, that's, that's a gorgeous skirt. And then, and that is a velveteen fabric too, which is kind mm -hmm. of unusual. That's the other thing I wanted to point out because a lot of them are like the stretchy fabrics and that's one of the, the velvet ones. So, and then on the right is kind of an interesting story because I found, I just found this, someone posted it on Facebook 
And it's kind of cool because it shows that you can find Poochie anywhere. Look at garage sales, look at flea markets. So she was, so she said that she found her holy, holy grail in a flea market. And it was worn by a screen app actress, Romy Schneider. And she has, you know, the Google images and ever saying, and, and so, and that is just a gorgeous piece. So that's a piece of history right there. And, and she found it in a flea market. So awesome. Makes me miss going to flea markets. I know, right? It's like, <laughs> well, those are sourcing methods that we talked about in our last episode. So these are some other ones that are that were sold. I think I think some of them are most of them are sold. Some of them are actual current prices. But again, asking. So this the, on the left is a tank, and that's just a tank, eighty nine ninety nine. And then in the middle, this one this one was a sold. That one sold for seven hundred ninety nine dollars. It was a star print dress. Can you zoom up on that anymore? Let's see. Okay, that's better. So yeah, so that was um, from two thousand eight, and that one sold for seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. And on the right is an example of uh, some of the the pants that that can sell for quite a bit. And I love, I just love that print. That is just so amazing. Yeah. That is really fun. Yeah, so, And I have a tank actually listed that was similar to the one on the left, which is kind of why I posted that. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but so those, the 70 stockings, uh, that was from Etsy. You can see two $120 and those are just amazing there. So that is kind of like the precursor to the leggings, I would say. Well, I think that the, yeah, but the, the, uh, the full cat suits had already been introduced. Yeah. So it's almost like the bottom half of the cat. That's true. Yeah. Good point. So, and then the, and the right is on the middle is a, a listing on Etsy for fabric. So that is a silk crepe print and I don't know my centimeters, so I can't translate that <laughs> off the top of my head, but, um, I don't know. That is not big. That's what I figured. It's not that, that huge of an amount, but two hundred and three dollars and fifty cents. I guess that was actually eBay because it's got bids, so it ended in four bids, plus plus shipping. Uh, two hundred and three dollars and fifty cents. So, and I did see also. I did notice. I just want to note that if you go onto the Italian eBay website, you can also find a lot, and you can find there's a lot of Italian websites that also have a lot of Pucci information as well because it is you know. Uh, it isn't he was an italian you know it is it has roots in in italy so yeah well i think this was like less than two yards of fabric okay right? thank I you may, yeah. i may have done that math wrong but so it's definitely not a huge piece yeah. of fabric it's, yeah but there's pieces you can look on etsy ebay you can see you know search the fabrics and you can see that mm -hmm. the fabric will go for a lot and then on the right is from etsy that is a sewing pattern that sold for 75 dollars so the Pucci seven the Poochie vintage sewing patterns will also sell for quite a bit. You can make some money on those too. So yes, and I definitely also saw other designs of patterns on eBay that were more like twenty five thirty, which I think is a pretty uh, solid price for the this type the the ones that say like the Vogue Couturier design. That yeah. um, you know, I think that's about the ballpark for the more common ones. So you know, it goes up from there. Yeah. And on the, so this was the, the dress, the peacock dress, the Maryland peacock dress I was talking about. So there's an example of one that sold for $325. So there you go. So, and they, she had vintage forties. That was not vintage forties by any means, but no, that was incorrect. That would have been really incorrect. It was, it was sixties. So early sixties. So, and then on the right is uh, there that's a pair of these are more modern ones these are uh, poochie leggings or tights $295 and then on the left that, that was a sold that sold for $250 plus shipping pants suit a gorgeous um that and that's an example of a more modern pants suit that's not one of the vintage ones so And then we have a bodysuit, $150. And then in the on the middle, now this was not, I don't, I forget what website this was, but this was one of, this was a more of, you know, a smaller selling uh, a website for vintage clothing. It was kind of a, a boutique wow. selling, but $1,550 for that gorgeous Palazzo pant jumpsuit from the 60s. That is just to die for though. 
Yeah. And then on the left is a silk jersey dress, uh, $299. So. And then here we're going to talk about the cat suits. So on the right, that actually, those are actually the Braniff Airlines cat suits. Yeah. So, which is crazy when you think of an uh, of a flight attendant wearing that, you know, but that was all the rage. And then on the left, there's an example of the 60s cat suit. So Lola, you actually have a cat suit, correct? I do. They're so amazing though. I just, crazy. So this... So this is one of Lola's Holy Grail finds. Yeah, this is maybe one of the, it's one of the top 10 pieces I've ever found. So amazing. This is a newer one. This, yes. Not for mm -hmm. we should, yeah. And it actually looks really similar to one of the patterns that you showed in another piece in that, I think it was in that, the, the shell. Really yeah, that, that, that one, does look very, that. yeah. The one that I wanted to have in hand, like I, I put down somewhere and I can't find so it. So this one has the booties on it. Some of them don't. And it's what threw me off in dating this because it seems like based on the tag, I think this is more 80s, but I, I couldn't find any other examples of the booties that were um, that were from like later decades. But so this is the inside tag. Okay. And then it does have. What, 80s? Is that what we decided? I think so, yeah, because it's. Yeah, it looks like it's. It has this um, interior tag and it does have spandex in it. Okay. It's so, yeah. Generally a newer. I remember looking it up and being surprised that spandex was actually a slightly older than I would have expected brand yeah. name, but it definitely is more common in like the more recent decades. So would you say like that's probably late 80s, early 90s? I'm, I no, no, I, I think it's older than that. I think it's it's like, I'm trying to see it. Can I see the tag again? It's a script tag, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, that does. Okay, yeah, I think that that is 80s. Yeah, so that's what I, that's what I would think is is a solid 80 like 80s. Really cool though. So what would you list this for? Well, that's why I haven't listed it yet. <laughs> I did just notice there is a tiny flaw on the back. Um, I don't know how much that will, you can't, it's barely. No, yeah, that's not a deal breaker. Um, I saw a similar piece that was listed for like 700. Um, so 750, I think that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then put, you know what, put a best offer on it and see what happens. Yeah. So, I do kind of, one reason I was waiting to list it is because I kind of want to find someone who can model it for me and do some photos on. Oh, that's a good idea. Especially um, like, yeah, especially on Etsy, if you were to list it like on Etsy or Depop, that would, even on eBay, where, where do you think you're going to list it? Are you going to cross post it? Yeah, I was thinking, so there's Depop, um, the Stair Collective, which might have been the boutique -y site that you were talking about okay. before I found the comp for this. But I've read that they actually also take a huge cut of your profit. So even though they generally have higher comps there, it may not work out for the best because, you know, in the end, you don't make as much. Yeah. Um, I think the only place I would not list it is Poshmark or yeah, yeah. Safari because you're probably not going to get it. I would put it like maybe Etsy, Depop, The Stair, maybe eBay. <laughs> Jason says, I'll model it for you. Yeah, that'll be. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, that would be funny. Oh, uh, so, oh, so he he says have have a, comments and questions. Yeah, so does have a union tag? Does not have a union tag. So maybe it is 90s. Maybe I'm wrong. It maybe 90s, yeah. That's what I was thinking originally, like early 90s, but yeah. okay, so that's that's helpful. And then okay, she also Stacy also said the fabric is still sold in larger larger fab, including mood in the USA, which brings me to something. So she wanted to mention the fabric being used in home sewing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely. kind of like, yeah. yeah, so it falls into a grayer. So that's kind of like the lily dresses that you see mm -hmm. made of lily fabric, but they're actually not quite lily, but they're lily because so, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. So you could say this is a homemade vintage dress yeah. out of 
Gucci. Yeah, I think I showed an example of one in our yeah. little yeah. it was all quilted fabric that somebody did, but it was yeah. still still considered Gucci, but it's yeah, it's kind of a gray area. Yeah. So I'm just looking again for in case I missed a union tag, but yeah, I don't think there is one. And I have looked this over fairly carefully. Yeah, then it it's probably 90s then. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, so like I said, Stacy is a great resource. She's She's right on her fashion there. Yeah, so I that's my goal now is to get this listed and um, and then I can report back and say yeah, definitely you got to get it listed so you can tell us what happens. Yeah. Okay. So moving on, we're going a little over today, but we have a, we have a lot of information. I want to when when there is so much to talk about. Yeah, there's and you guys can make do not like definitely look for and I have a couple of samples here that I'm going to show you of other things so. Um, that are not poochy, but when you see prints, like I'll just show, like when you see prints that if I'm in the thrift store and I see like if I see a print like this, I'm gonna like just like when I saw that my the clutch that I found in with the cosmetic band, you get to know poochy prints after a while. So mm -hmm. this is something that I would pull out and think, oh, maybe that's poochy, but it's actually oddly enough old navy. So <laughs> But when you're going through the thrift store, you know, when I mean, you see these crazy prints, look for it, look at them because you never know. This is another one, an example that I would look and pull out in the thrift store and say, oh, maybe this is Pucci. Very Pucci esque, but it is actually um, ECI. So, and do not, keyword, I see this a lot too Pucci esque, Pucci inspired. Pucci, don't, don't do that in your keywords. But when you're looking at Paddington. My point is when you're looking through at the thrift store, definitely, you know, pull out these kind of wacky prints mm -hmm. and you never know, you might have a poochie, so. Yeah, it's definitely easy to, if you're skimming the, the racks to have your eye drawn to those bright prints. Exactly. And um, I thought we could skip to collabs. Yeah, okay, sure. Because so, yeah. definitely want to talk about these. So, there are a ton of collaborations that um, Poochie's done with different brands. Some of them are more expected than others, and all of them seem to have great comps. Yeah. Can you zoom in on that? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So there's a lot of them there, but you can see an example. So on the top, there is one of the Adidas sneaker lines that I had mentioned. Rosenthal, that is is on the left. That's a that's a vase. Uh, Rosen, that is a vase that's on the current website that I, I do have a comp, uh, a, mm -hmm. not a comp, but a example right. of Nike on the bottom. Uh, there's, um, what is it? Um, I can't read them. Moves. What was that? Molenski? Is that it? Molenski? Oh, I, it's too blurry. I can't yeah. Read. yeah. So you'll see. And it, I have a good tip here. If you do, if you search a meal, like if you go on just in Google, you just do a Google search and you do um, Emilio Pucci with an X, which is, you know, what mm -hmm. it's abbreviated for, you know, the collaboration, you will find a lot of images of, of these collabs. So you'll get an idea. So there's a water bottle by 24. And that was really, really, that was really popular. Um, so that's one of, that's, Example. Yeah, there's the, the Adidas sneakers on the right. And any of these collabs, you know, definitely look for them because you can. There's cell phone cases. There's just everything. Well, and this is a great tip for any big, you know, major brand or designer is to do that you know, search, you know, brand name X to get an idea of what collabs are out there. Because that is, you know, it's so easy to then go into the Google images and you see all these examples and even finding comps and stuff. So I'm going to definitely try that with, mm -hmm. you know, other brands I'm trying to research and get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. So this is a current collab that's on the website right now, Coche and Pucci. So yeah, that's is Christelle. Christelle, I think is her first name, Coche. She's French and she is a high-end designer and she has a collaboration right now with and it's on you know runway you can youtube if you look on youtube you can see some of the runway shows and examples gorgeous collection but very very expensive and very high end so go on to their current site and this is on the current site too this is the the rose involved base that's 300 and i can't see that it's 300 something dollars 349 yeah okay, so 
so cheaper for Poochie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. And then this, well, is, this is one that I wouldn't have expected. So this is the coffee. Yeah, so this is Illy, Illy Arc. And this is one that actually, um, I think Laudima, um, the, the, his daughter Laudima had, mm. had worked on. So, and then here are some there of the is. super collabs. Yeah, really cool. And, you know, those, those can go for a lot too. So definitely be fine. And there's the, the 24 bottles and okay. Can you zoom up on that? Yes. The skateboards are not, um, now Ness is the, so that, yeah, there's Pucci skateboards. Interesting. Starbucks cards. Yeah, and this is an interesting one yeah. because it's a little, it's one of those kind of little bolos, but so this was at Starbucks Japan. So they did a, they actually did, there are actually Starbucks cards that are Pucci. And it's interesting because those, even if they have nothing on them, there are collectors. So now you have the Starbucks collectors and the Pucci collectors. Mm -hmm. so if you have, I mean, maybe you have one of them lying around or maybe you can, maybe you find one, but I mean, for 15 bucks, I'll take it for, you know, well, that was Sing Singapore dollars, so I don't know how that converts. Oh, oh, okay, that's right. But still, yeah. you would probably make, you know, yeah, you can make it decent. So this is the so we talk about the vintage fashion guild a lot, and I would definitely recommend that as a resource. So these are some of the Pucci labels that are on the vintage fashion guild, and this is a great way to date your labels. Yeah. So this is why I was also thrown off by the. Um, the label on my cat suit is matches the older, like the seventies, but obviously it doesn't mean it's only. Used. I think it's a retro label though. Yeah. Yeah. Like re retro meaning like a throwback kind of thing. Okay. So 15 Singapore dollars is uh, about $10. Okay. So still, but so, yeah, for something that you might just throw away. Plastic that you might throw away. Yeah. That's why I included that. So, yeah, so you'll see some of these. Like, so go on to the Vintage Fil Fashion Guild, definitely, mm -hmm. and look at these labels because you can date your your. And there's one on the left for the Form Fit Rogers label, and I think there was one of the swimsuit line labels on the previous page. You'll see Saks Fifth Avenue, so you'll see what some of these labels look like. And you, if you have a vintage piece, by all means, go to the Vintage Fashion Guild and mm -hmm. see. So on the right, on the bottom right, they included that 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 is not a Pucci. It's a yes. <laughs> So definitely, so don't confuse. I have people. seen listings of that brand as Pucci, and it, it can be a little confusing because they do have some yeah. bright, like bright color prints. But if you know Pucci, you know it's not Pucci. If you're not super familiar with it, I can see how people get confused for sure. Yeah. And then these are some newer labels. So the newer labels are going to have the European tags made in Italy, on, like on the left, the care tags and all that. Yeah. So this and, is, yeah. And then that you sent me that I showed the other week, this is yeah. definitely a newer tag. Yeah. It has the, it's just tacked on at the top, which is definitely mm -hmm. a sign that it's newer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so yeah, so that's a new. Then, what do you think that you'll sell that for, Lola? Um, I would say it's more in line with like the uh, the scoop neck top that you show, just because it's newer and it's. So mine, I. Yeah, so I would say I would say maybe around fifty for that. So my yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. My right? listing, if you can, I, I don't know if you can, if you have that to pull up, but the the one that I was going to show that I had in hand that I absentmindedly put down somewhere um, was is is a just a shell top, but it has some flaws. I only spent a couple dollars for it, maybe two dollars, I think, but it does have some flaws. So that's why I priced it at thirty eight dollars and. You can see if you scroll through, is that a screen capture or is that the actual? This list? is the actual. Okay, so if you can scroll through there, you can see the label there is a new-ish label that's, yeah. So there's, so that is um, a probably like early to mid 2000s. Hmm. And it's not, you can see it's it's different than the the, the new, newer labels with the black text. On. But there's an example that, see, it has a couple of bleach stains, like little spots on it. So I disclosed oh. those and I did list it for a little less because of that. And I think I'm going to, I don't know why I just listed it on Posh. So I'm going to list it. I'm going to cross post it too. But mm -hmm. 
it is um there's a, there's a great example of the Emilio signature right there so so I'm so I listed this a little bit lower and I'm hoping to get around 30 for it just because it does have flaws and it's just a, it's just a simple shell top so I'm not expecting to make big money with it but I picked it up for just a couple of dollars so yeah and oh and I wanted to talk about the prints a little bit too yes just briefly so there are like you know with, with Lily Pulitzer how every print has a name it's not it is like that, but it it's harder to find the prints with Poochie, and you have to kind of dig and search, especially for the vintage prints. The newer ones are easier to find the print name. Uh, I think in a lot of cases, the print name isn't a deal breaker, like the Lily, you know, but, but it is nice to have them. So there's a couple iconic prints. So this is the... Um, the what is it called the vi uh, Vivera? Thank you, Vivera. Yes. So this is the Vivera. So th this print, you can see those wavy kind of oval dots. You know that is the hallmark of that print. It comes in different colors. You know there's some different designs, but that that wavy egg kind of oval egg shaped design mm -hmm. that is the Vivera print. And later there there's actually a a fragrance called mm -hmm. Vivera named after this print that was that's a Pucci awesome. fragrance. So. Yeah, so there's an scarf. example of the scarf. Yeah, so definitely look for that print. That is one of the most iconic prints. And oh, there's an example of the of the signature there. And then some of the newer ones, this is from the 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 website, they actually have the print name right on, you know, right there. So they're easy to easier to find. That's the Murray print. And so some of the newer ones are definitely gonna be easier. And then there is also there's the Fortuna print. So you can find some of them. It's just, you have to dig a little bit. It's not, and I tried to find like a library. Um, I can't read that, but that's another print. That's this is called the Quadratini. Okay. Yeah. So if you dig a little bit and I did find a couple of websites that seem to have some, mm -hmm. that was one of the websites that seems to have some of the prints. Um, I don't, I'll, I can put that link in the, in the description mm -hmm. later. But, and then this is the, is this the Arcade. Arcade, yeah, that's another print that seems to be popular. So definitely look for the, you have to do a little digging, but you can find the print names if you, yeah. if you search a little bit, so. And some of the books you were talking about were Bolos too. There's yeah, so there are a couple books about Pucci. And I was thinking, oh, I'll go on Amazon, maybe order one to uh -huh. no. Or no, they are quite expensive. It seems it's like you hundred dollars expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so one of them, the lowest price on Amazon was like 150. I didn't do too much searching around. So I don't know if maybe it's cheaper on eBay, but yeah. definitely if you find a book about Pucci, it seems like those are bolos across the board as well. So. Yes. So lots of information there, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what to look for. Yeah. And uh, definitely if you have anything in your profit piles that are Poochie that you've been waiting to list and this helped you list them, then, you know, let us know how that goes because we would love to hear about it. Yeah, and I also want to say, too, that if you're looking to see what sells, again, do a search in eBay or, you know, on, 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 a, on one of the a similar site and price do a search for solds that are highest to lowest you'll see on ebay that the highest items are the gowns the evening wear and the maxi dresses that can go in the thousands but you know, that that also helps you get a good idea so definitely poke around do your research and if you have a pushy piece ask us we're here to help and definitely do your do your research before you just you know put it on and underprice something right okay and we have yeah, we do have some, some quick news. piece of news. So we we've, we've talked before about how ThreadUp is working with different companies to either promote the um, their inventory in brick and mortar stores and also to encourage people to send in items. And I saw on Women's Wear Daily that they just partnered with. Yeah, this was a little surprising to me, actually. With Abercrombie & Fitch. Yeah. So as far as I can tell from this article, what they're doing is now <clears throat> they're another option for 
if you if you sell uh, items through ThreadUp, and then in order to cash out, you have two options. You can either cash out into cash, and ThreadUp actually charges you a fee for doing so, which is kind of obnoxious in my opinion. Or you can cash out into a gift card for a few different retailers. So they're usually the kind of retailers that are also more sustainably minded. Like I know Reformation is one of them. And when you do that, you actually get a small bonus. So you get more than your cash out account. Of course, then you can only spend it at that one retailer. But um, so Abercrombie & Fitch is now one of those options. Yeah, which is interesting to me because I don't wouldn't think of that as the typical thread up company. But yeah. I guess, like you said, they're kind of reinventing themselves. But that's why I wanted to talk about it. I have really noticed that Abercrombie & Fitch has completely reinvented themselves mm -hmm. and are trying to market themselves to basically like my age range. So people in their 30s who mm -hmm. when they were in middle school and high school, Abercrombie was like the, you know, like the teen brand back then. Yeah, yeah. But they they're so this they're appealing to that nostalgia factor, but also really introducing styles that are currently popular among that like kind of millennial um, <clears throat> mid career kind of demographics. So they're not it's not super expensive. I think it's actually less expensive, or I just have a different conception of what's expensive because I'm no longer in high school. <laughs> but um, the style is definitely more kind of streamlined. They're more in line with what you might find at like Madewell or Reformation, a lot of the like small floral prints and 90s minimalist aesthetics. So it does make sense that they would do this because it seems in line with what they are trying to kind of project as an image now. And I have not sold anything that's ever from me, but I definitely would keep my eye on it as maybe something that I would start picking up now because it does have a bit of a momentum building around it as a brand that I think will be more and more popular in the future. So something that I definitely would have skipped over before, I might give another another look at it now. Sorry, Paddington is just, I don't know if you guys can see him down there. He is just, yeah. I just imagine that he would, he would be like up and around. He's just laying down, but he's still and he's just whining. He does this every time I do a show now. He does not like it. <sighs> so I'm trying to pet him, but it's not really helping. Okay. So our market report, we're almost, we're almost done here. So your market report, because my reports yes. are still on hiatus, but they will be back next week. So I was hoping to do better on this. So the brand is Ayacuchi, which is Ayacuchi. I'm probably, am I butchering that? I don't, I don't speak Italian. Yeah. See, that's my problem. I speak French and I still butcher French. So, but I think okay. it's Iacucci, but yeah, that's what I would think. But anyway, it is a high end brand, um, not to be confused with Gucci, but it's, it is a high end brand and the leather is very supple, very, I should have actually, I have the purse. I just packed it though. It's already boxed up and ready to go out. I was hoping to get more for it. I did spend $10 for it. It was behind the counter and it was in new, pretty new condition. Mm -hmm. Had the dust bag with it. And so I did pay $10 for it. I had it up for more and I was hoping it is worth a lot more. But unfortunately, the brand just doesn't seem to have a huge following. Mm -hmm. And I ended up taking a best offer because I, I would just had it up for a long time. Um, um, offer on Poshmark for $38. Hi, Coochie. Thank you. See? Stacy's actually Italian. So. Thanks. Hi, Gucci. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up taking a offer for $38 and I was, you know, I wasn't thrilled with it, but I I was like, it's a sale, mm. you know. Um, and that's still a good profit. A different profit. I still made like a $20 profit, mm. you know, after the fees. So not bad. And then they paid shipping. So, and then I sold this Givenchy. I remember this one. Yeah. So I did. I spent. I spent like four dollars for it. I sold it for eighteen. Kind of hoping to sell it for a little more, but it was just a plain black tank. It was of high quality cotton, but again, just a tank. And I kind of bought this just to have the Givenchy name in my Poshmark closet, you know, because I like mm -hmm. to mix it up with some some high end names and some different designers. So when I find a piece in a certain brand, sometimes I'll pick it up just to kind of pepper those brands into my yeah. closet. So that was one of these. And I sold it for 18 plus shipping, not a big sale, but you know, decent for a tank top. And then 
This is amazing. I know. So I sold these last night on Depop and I sold them for these were the brand is Caro Connie Connie and it is a 90s kind of streetwear brand. I found these in the bins for 99 cents a pound. Pick them up. They were very, they're very large. They're 40 by 34. They long inseam. The guy actually messaged me and asked me to measure the inseam again because he was like, I'm like six feet tall. And I measured it for him. He was asking a couple questions and then he just bought them outright. Didn't even make me an offer for wow. $75 plus shipping to Canada. So he spent almost $100 with shipping on the, this pair of jeans. So that's a great example of when you have an unusual size. You may have to sit on it longer, but there's going to be someone out there who's looking for that size and can never find it mm -hmm. and is ex super excited to find like a style they like yeah. that can also fit, you know, their taller yeah. body or whatever. And I think this guy knew the brand too. I think yeah. Yeah. one of those, you know, so, and Depop was the perfect venue to solve Definitely something like that, the urban wear, the street wear. So, he knew Jason. I was talking to last night. He's like, Oh yeah, I knew I wore the, that brand in the nineties. <laughs> I had never heard of it in the nineties. So, and I did my research. I saw them in the bins and I knew that they were definitely 90s streetwear. Did my research, priced them accordingly. And that was a great wow. sale. So that, that just, that was my big sale last night. Okay. And so we always have a question for everyone at the end of our show. And we would love to know what Pucci items you have found in thrift stores. And as Sabrina mentioned in the chat, she says she never sees them in her area. So, you know, this is also a great example of maybe are there parts of the country, maybe more urban areas where it's more likely to find them. So if you found some items, maybe also include where were you? What kind of store were you in? Or was it a, a, thrift, a thrift store, a flea market? And if you've listed and sold them, let us know what your comps are because that's also super exciting for us to hear about. So and yeah, definitely. So if you, I'm sorry, to, but if you have a pooch item too, that you're in, that you're, that you need help on, you know, by all means ask us, you oh, know, yeah. tag, us, tag us on, um, tag us on Instagram. Uh, let us know in the YouTube comments that you have something you can't post photos, but you can send us an email. Nalothirst at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be future guests, let us know. We, we are looking for guests. Please subscribe to our channel. We're looking, we are trying to grow our channel and we definitely are trying to raise our subscriber base. So definitely subscribe and yes. Find and you know, like this video, if you found it useful, send it to friends, you know, all of that kind of, of our, you know, our fans helping us reach a bigger audience. We really appreciate it. And we love having you guys in the chat every Friday and hearing about you watching it later. If you're watching it after the live show, it really, really makes our week. So um, and I, I just want to also to put out a request. I, as I mentioned last week, I think, or maybe a couple weeks ago now, I've been making masks and I just committed to making a big lot of masks for a great charitable cause. And I am out of bias tape. It is really hard to find right now. I have seen it on eBay, but a lot of people are putting it up at auction, which, you know, is great, but uh, I, kind of need it as soon as possible. So I don't want to wait for the auctions to end. So okay. if anyone watching this has bias tape, elastic, or quilting cotton that you would like to sell me, I'm happy to pay for it. Uh, so message me on Instagram or email us and I will get your email. It'd be a huge help and you know, would, would love to also support you guys. So that is it for this week at Paddington's day to go. So. Oh, and so Stacy says if she lives in Central Kentucky, she's found many poochie pieces. Oh, yeah. that's great. Oh, that's and my that is my you know I do believe that just like you know finding tiki mugs here isn't like the most common thing. I find them, and you know anywhere that you, it's everywhere. You just have to look. So ah, so Stacy is going to send you. Oh, Stacy, so much. And I did not know you're in Kentucky. That's where my in-laws are. So maybe next time I'm in Louisville, we could uh, hit the thrift stores and find some. Oh, you would. You guys love each other. Trust me. You're so much alike. Yeah. So okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. We'll be watching next week, but we'll let you know, and we will be back next week. So enjoy. Thank you. Bye.